Hello, this is David Diga Hernandez, and you are watching Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV Network. I don't believe that you're watching this by accident. I believe that God is a God of miracles, and any moment can be your miracle moment. I want to talk to you right now about the power of a sudden miracle and how, although things might look impossible now, they can change in an instant. So I want to encourage you with this faith-stirring word. First, Stephen Moctezuma is here with me. He's going to lead you in some very anointed worship. And then we're getting right into this message. Here is Stephen Moctezuma. It all revolves around your throne. Who can know your glory? So high above, yet slain for us, you alone are worthy. And the praise is yours, and the praise is yours. You're the one we bow before Reigning over us As we lift you up You will reign forevermore And the praise is yours And the praise is yours you're the one we bow before Reigning over us As we lift you up You will reign forevermore Glory and praise Power and strength, worthy is the Lamb of God, hallelujah. Glory and praise, power and strength, worthy is the Lamb of God, hallelujah. You might find yourself in an impossible situation right now, but the good news is this, an impossible situation is the perfect setting for a miracle. If where you're going doesn't require faith, then you're not heading toward your destiny. You might be facing a difficult season. You might be coming up against a sickness, financial hardship. Maybe certain relationships are in turmoil. Perhaps you're believing for an unsaved loved one to come to Christ and they're only showing signs of becoming more and more stubborn. I know what it's like to wonder where God is. I know what it's like to be waiting on a miracle. I know what it's like to be pressed up against the wall, having taken that last step and it seems like there's nowhere else to go. Here's my encouragement to you. God makes a way where there seems to be no way. God is still a miracle working God. He's able to do more than we can think. He's able to do more than we can request. To drive this point home, I want to take a look at a very popular portion of Scripture. This is found in Joshua chapter 6. Let's go there now. Now the gates of Jericho were tightly shut because the people were afraid of the Israelites. No one was allowed to go in or go out. 
But the Lord said to Joshua, I have given you Jericho, its king, and all its strong warriors. You and your fighting men should march around the town once a day for six days. Seven priests will walk around ahead of the ark, each carrying a ram's horn. On the seventh day, you are to march around the town seven times with the priests blowing the horns. When you hear the priests give one long blast on the ram's horns, have all the people shout as loud as they can, then the walls of the town will collapse and the people can charge straight into the town. Now here we see that God has promised to the Israelites the land. It's theirs for the taking. But standing before them is the obstruction of these mighty walls. The walls were tightly shut. The people who were afraid of the Israelites had locked themselves in. No one was going in or out. So here, the Israelites come to the place now where the promises of God are right within their possession, yet there is something blocking them. God says, that's your land. God says, you can have it. God says, I'm going to give it to you. But the walls say something different. The walls say this is where it stops. The walls say you can't go beyond this point. The walls say what's beyond this point does not belong to you. Now, the Israelites were unable to go through, so God gives them these instructions, and these instructions were quite odd. You know, whenever you find yourself spiritually stagnant, whenever you find yourself stuck in life, one of the best ways to become unstuck, one of the best ways to move through a stubborn barrier is to simply act out in faith. The step of faith has the power to move you beyond the point of frustration. The step of faith has the power to remove stubborn barriers, to take away all hindrances, to loose the chains of bondages, and God wants you to take a step of faith. When you come up against that wall, when you're pressed up against that hardship, when you're looking around and there seems to be nowhere else to go, that is when God will speak. That is when God's word comes to life. That is when your faith is tested. So God gives them these instructions. These instructions, they seem odd. He didn't give them armies. He asked them for faith. God doesn't give to us what we imagine we need. God doesn't always give us what we think we deserve. God doesn't always give us the resources in a way that we think they will come. God works in a way that is contrary to the way we would do things. That's why He's God. God does not conform to our patterns. God does not conform to our way of thinking. God's ways are higher than our ways. God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And though we may come up against this situation and ask of God for the things we think we need, God will often send to us something else. So again, I emphasize, God does not always give us what we imagine we need. Instead, He asks us for faith. Continuing now with verse number six, so Joshua called together the priest and said, take up the ark of the Lord's covenant and assign seven priests to walk in front of it each carrying a ram's horn. Then he gave orders to the people, march around the town, and the armed men will lead the way in front of the ark of the Lord. After Joshua spoke to the people, the seven priests with the ram's horn started marching in the presence of the Lord, blowing the horns as they marched. And the ark of the Lord's covenant followed behind them. Some of the armed men marched in front of the priests with the horns and some behind the ark with the priests continually blowing the horns. So Joshua here has given them the instructions. Verse 10, this is a very key instruction. He tells them, do not shout, do not even talk, Joshua commanded. Not a single word from any of you until I tell you to shout, then shout. Don't shout until I tell you to shout. Not a single word. Don't say anything. Just do what you've been told to do. How many times do we try to make things happen in our own power, by our own strength? How many times do we come up against a barrier, and instead of standing firm in faith, we flail about in fear, trying to work up some miracle on our own? Here's the reality. If you could perform the task on your own, if you could, by effort or emotion or striving or frustration, produce the result that you wanted, then it wouldn't require a miracle and therefore wouldn't involve God. But you need a miracle. Why? Because it's outside of your ability. It's outside of your power. And though you may feel helpless, though you may feel as though you've come to the end of yourself and you might feel like that's a bad thing, 
This is actually the best position you can find yourself in. Because it's in the impossible that God's power is demonstrated. It's when you're weak that He becomes strong. It's when I step out of the way that the Holy Spirit steps in. Don't shout until I tell you, not even a sound. Just wait on God's timing. How do I know God's timing? He tells me. I don't try to step ahead of God. Because if I step ahead of God, He doesn't prepare the way for me. I don't wait behind God because if I wait behind God and I'm dragging my feet and I'm staying behind because of fear, then I'll never reach the destination God wants me to go. Instead, I have to stay in step with Him, in the moment, perfect faith, perfect peace, knowing, believing, trusting the mighty power of God. He's able. So when I find myself in this situation, I don't become frantic. I don't become frustrated. Why? By the Spirit I become filled with peace. It's the Holy Ghost who is able to make the miracle happen in your life. And it comes about by faith. So he says to them, don't say a word. Don't try to make it happen in your own timing. Don't try to make it happen by your own power. How do you know you're doing it by your own power and in your own timing? Because you're not involving God. Because you're not trusting Him. Because you're not consulting Him. When we involve the Lord, when we pray, when we speak to Him, when we acknowledge Him, when we obey His Word, we're saying to Him, God, in Your timing, I'll move. God, in Your timing, it will happen. Yes, I pray. Yes, I persist. Matthew chapter 7 tells us to, to ask, to seek, to knock. It's part of it. Yet while I ask, while I seek, while I knock, I'm trusting Him. I'm not moving ahead of Him. I'm not speaking until it's time to shout. Joshua chapter 6 now, going down to verse 11. I'm going to read verses 11 through 16, and then I'm going to skip down to verse 20. So the ark of the Lord was carried around the town once that day, and then everyone returned to spend the night in the camp. Joshua got up early the next morning, and the priest again carried the ark of the Lord. The seven priests with the ram's horn marched in front of the ark of the Lord, blowing their horns. Again, the armed men marched both in front of the priest with the horns and behind the ark of the Lord. All this time, the priests were blowing their horns. On the second day, they again marched around the town once and returned to the camp. They followed this pattern for six days. On the seventh day, the Israelites got up at dawn and marched around the town as they had done before. But this time, they went around the town seven times. The seventh time around, as the priests sounded the long blast of their horns, Joshua commanded the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the town. When the people heard the sound of the ram's horns, they shouted as loud as they could. Suddenly. The walls of Jericho collapsed, and the Israelites charged straight into the town and captured it. Imagine now being part of those, among those who marched around these walls. For six days straight, they marched around those walls once a day. Now, as they're marching around the walls, I don't imagine that there was any progress made. They just marched around the wall. And each time they marched around, on each day, nothing happened. I wonder if they even saw a crack in the wall. I wonder if there was even a slight shaking. I doubt there was because nothing happened until that seventh day. Imagine being in that group. How discouraging would it be if after a while you saw that the miracle was not happening? Maybe you're there right now. Maybe you feel as though you've marched around this situation again and again, and again, only to be disappointed again, and again, and again. How many times have you seen your hopes rise only to come crashing down? How many times have you had to tell yourself, this time the miracle will occur. This time I will get my breakthrough. This time I will be set free. This time, this time, this time. And if you're not careful, if you tried to make it happen in your time, then you become discouraged and fail to see that it's going to happen in God's time. Maybe you're marching and you don't see even the slightest crack in the wall. There's not even a sign that anything's going to change. You're looking at your situation and you're saying, how can this possibly end well for me? How can this possibly turn into a good thing? How will this possibly occur? Nothing is impossible with God. 
He is able to make a way where there seems to be no way. It wasn't until the seventh day now they're marching around, and on that seventh day they march around seven times. Six days in a row, they march around once a day, and then on the seventh day it's seven times. Do you realize that their walk was much more difficult just before the miracle occurred? There was, there was this, this extra effort that they put in, this extra step of faith. Now, I'm not saying that it happens by our power, but God does require to us faith, and we must persist if we're going to see it. God does the work, but we must persist faithfully and stay by His side if we're going to see the miracle. Now, I know God is with us. What I'm talking about is walking in obedience. God never leaves us. When I say stay faithfully by His side, I'm talking about walking in obedience continually until the miracle happens or just trust God with the results. Either way, God is a God of miracle. And on that seventh day, it was more difficult than any other day. On that seventh day, it was more tiring than any other day. The miracle comes just when you've come to the end of yourself. Just when you have nothing else left to give. Just when you've looked at all the possible ways it could happen. I can't tell you how many times in ministry I imagined that we would find our miracle through one path and God would shut that door and bring it through another door just to show me that it wasn't the door that brought the miracle, it was Him. God will do it. He will perform every promise in His Word. Don't listen to the enemy. The enemy will tell you, God overlooked you. He uses your emotions to endorse that lie. The enemy will tell you, if it was going to happen, it would have happened by now. And the enemy uses your circumstances to endorse that lie. In fact, the enemy also speaks through religious people. Religious people often say such ignorant things like, well, God is not interested in your health, wealth, or happiness, and it's a shame to even ask Him for anything. Not only is that anti-biblical, it's completely um, against the nature of God. No, there's a balance to all things. But God wants to perform the miracle. But it's in His timing. It's according to His will by His word, on His terms, His way. Just trust Him. Trust Him that everything is going to be okay. He's your hiding place. He's your strong tower. He's your refuge, your shield, and your strength, your protector, your provider. God is able. I want to pray with you now. I want to pray that God would stir faith in you. Don't quit. No, you're not going to give up. No, God is not done with you. No, you haven't gone too far. Stay with Him. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for that one receiving this now. And I ask you, Lord, for the fire of the Holy Ghost to consume every lie, Consume every bit of the flesh, Lord. Weaken the old nature that faith might come alive. Help us to stay focused on you, Jesus. Help us to take our difficult things and give them to you, Lord. And to completely trust you. Knowing that you will work it out. Knowing that you are in charge. You yourself will handle it. We hand our situation over to you now give it to you, Jesus. And I want you to say it because you agree. Say amen. That is it for the lesson. I want to welcome now the new members of Spirit Church. There you are up on the screen. We love you and we are praying for you. I always say that because I always mean it. If you'd like information on how you can join the Spirit family, now over 10,000 members strong, then go to davidhernandezministries.com slash spiritchurch. Sign up today. It's 100% free. When you sign up, you're going to get a brand new email from me every single week with a fresh teaching anointed from heaven, a worship cover from Stephen Moctezuma, and the best part, you can reply to that email for prayer support from our ministry staff. Now to your comments. These are from the teaching, The Power of Prayer and Fasting, 15 Purposes. If you haven't seen that video and you want to know why we fast, you want to know what happens when we fast, biblically speaking, then go and watch that lesson from last week. I believe it will inspire you to fast. And while you're at it, if you're watching on YouTube, be sure also to subscribe and make sure you click that notification bell when you do. Subscribe to all our content, subscribe to all our social media, stay connected with us, 
And by the way, if you'd like me to potentially read your comment on next week's edition of Spirit Church, then go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section right now. So again, these comments are from last week's teaching, The Power of Prayer and Fasting, 15 Purposes. Shamrock Kami writes, Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your enlightenment. I am blessed by your ministry. I am watching from Africa. Mark Cuma says, God richly bless you, David. I have been seeing the word fasting everywhere I turn to. I saw your video and was drawn to it. I believe through you, the Lord Jesus is telling me to wait on him through fasting and prayer. Thanks. Rio Jaro writes, thank you, brother, for very insightful teaching. I am blessed by it. Scripture references are on point, too. And finally, Mezzi writes, This message really spoke deep inside my heart and elucidated my doubt about prayer and fasting. Thank you for always bringing me closer to God. May God always bless your ministry. And I'm praying that more souls will be saved and that people would be brought closer to God in the year 2020. And if it's God's will, then hope to see you in India soon. Well, for those of you who don't know, we've announced our schedule for events in 2020. To register or RSVP for any event, they're all free. Go to davidhernandezministries.com slash events. See if we're coming near to you. Now I want to talk to you for a second as we expand on this idea. We do events all around the world. We put out this media. Events are free. Media is free. So we fund everything through supporters like you. You know, often we ask God, God, I want to see a miracle in my life. I want to see breakthrough. I want, I want you to send someone or send some way, something somehow to bring me this breakthrough. But did you know that what you cause to happen for others, God will cause to happen for you? So don't just do something that's easy. Do something that's sacrificial. I'm asking you, my viewer, my friend, to support this ministry. If you receive from this ministry on a regular basis, then help us, help us continue to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit all around the world through events and media. We never charge for media. We never charge for events. We want to keep it that way. And we do that through your support. So here's what I'm asking. I need many of you to do this. Sign up now to become my partner for $30 a month for 2020. Let's begin the year on partnership. Sign up today. And even if you're watching this 10, 20, 30 years from now, you can still sign up to support the ministry. Sign up to support the ministry. Go to davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. Sign up today. Become my partner. If you sign up to give $30 or more a month, I will send you either Carriers of the Glory, Encountering the Holy Spirit in Every Book of the Bible, or 25 Truths About Demons and Spiritual Warfare. That will be my initiation gift to you. You can give a one-time gift or a monthly gift of any amount. We have people who donate large. We have people who donate small. But all of it counts toward the gospel. So would you do me that favor? Would you go right now to davidhernandezministries.com slash donate? Our ministry needs to reach every month for everything that we do, all the events, all the media, all the staff, all the things that we do that are not, some stuff we do that's not even seen on camera because we'd like to keep a very clear vision for the ministry. This ministry needs to bring in anywhere from eighty dollars to $100,000 every single month just to function. And it's coming in. God is providing. But be a part of that. Help us not just to keep this ministry going. Help us to keep this ministry growing that we might expand our reach and reach more people than ever before. So do that today, davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. You can give by card, you can give by bank account, PayPal. They have Apple Pay. You can even give cryptocurrency or stock. It's all there. Give from anywhere in the world, davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. Help us today with a one-time gift or monthly gift and sow your best seed today to help this ministry go all around the world. Well, that is it for this edition of Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV Network. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.